Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another amazing episode of History of the Marvel Universe. The following video topic was voted on by Patreon supporters. If you would like to vote on a topic to be added to the schedule, you can head on over to patreon.com slash marymarvelate and sign up for as little as $1 a month. The options are taken from YouTube comments, so if there's a hero or villain you'd like to see me cover, be sure to let me know. This week's story begins with a young man by the name of Parker Davis Robbins. Growing up in New York City, Robbins spent his adolescence during the Marvel Age of Heroes, when the number of superpowered heroes and villains was on the rise. As a boy, he and his father, Arthur Robbins, bore witness to a battle between the costumed criminal Electro and the masked vigilante Daredevil, one in which the villain proved victorious and escaped, captivating the younger Robbins. But despite growing up in an age of wonders, Parker's life wasn't a glamorous one. After his father passed away, Parker was left to take care of his mentally ill mother, Eliza. When her condition worsened and she became less cognizant of her surroundings, he had no choice but to bring her to a psychiatric facility for care. To pay for this, Parker dropped out of high school and became a petty thief alongside his cousin, a recovering alcoholic named John King. Things weren't all bad, however, and at one point he rescued a woman named Sarah from a group of attackers. After that, the two became a couple, and Sarah eventually became pregnant with Parker's child. Despite this, Robbins was a regular client for a Russian sex worker named Gro. For a time, his life continued like this, lying to his girlfriend to hide both his infidelity and his criminal activities. But Parker Robbins longed for more. He wanted better care for his mother and a better life for himself and Sarah. Not only that, but he wanted respect the kind that only power could give him. While the latter seemed out of reach, John thought he could help with Parker's money troubles with a burglary job he'd been setting up. However, instead of finding a warehouse full of valuables, as they expected, Robbins and King came upon a circle of candles and arcane sigils inscribed into the floor. But that's not all that was there, and the two were soon attacked by a cloaked demonic creature known as the Nisanti. Acting quickly, Parker Robbins pulled out his gun and opened fire on the monster, hitting it in the head. And shockingly, this seemed to have worked as the beast slumped over dead. Not wishing to leave empty-handed, Parker took the creature's cloak and boots before running away. However, he soon found that wearing the boots allowed him to literally run on air. Experimenting further, he discovered that while wearing the red cloak, he could turn invisible for as long as he held his breath. With Parker's new powers, John had another idea for a job they could pull. He'd learned of a shipment of illegal African blood diamonds coming in from Sierra Leone, completely untraceable and worth millions. However, unbeknownst to Robbins or King, this shipment belonged to a former Kingpin underboss named Dennis the Golem Golembuski, who employed superpowered muscle of his own. When Parker attempted to steal one of the two diamond pouches, his presence was detected by Golembuski's right-hand woman, Madame Rapier. Furthermore, three additional villains were hired to protect the shipment, Jack-O-Lantern, Shocker, and Constrictor. The scene erupted into a battle, drawing the attention of a pair of nearby police officers. By the time they arrived, the hired villains had escaped with one half of the diamonds, while Robbins had held on to the other. However, upon seeing the cops, Parker reacted hastily, firing a single bullet, hitting Officer Eric Bondi in the neck. Knowing the severity of the situation, John snuck up behind the other officer, Brooke Douglas, and knocked her out with the butt of his gun. As more officers arrived, John told Parker to escape while he was arrested. Bondi was rushed to a hospital, but fell into a coma and was placed into critical condition. Based on a description from Officer Douglas, the unidentified shooter instantly became a wanted fugitive known as the Hood. Nervous and panicking, Parker went to Gro's apartment to lay low. Meanwhile, since the case involved a superpowered assailant, agents from the FBI became involved. Based on the fact that Officer Douglas was struck from behind, the federal agents deduced that John King was the Hood's accomplice, and threatened to pin the shooting on him if he didn't reveal his identity. Parker attempted to free John, but FBI agents were ready with technology confiscated from the terrorist group of super scientists, Advanced Idea Mechanics. 
but then Parker incapacitated his attackers with lightning bolts from his hands. However, he had no idea how he was able to do such a thing, or how to do it again. Using his invisibility, Parker was then able to make it inside and reach John's holding cell. However, John insisted that the only way for either of them to make it through this was for Parker to sell the blood diamonds and use the money to get him an expensive lawyer. But when Parker went to pawn the diamonds, he ran into the Shocker, who was passing out warnings on behalf of the Golem to be on the lookout for just such a thing. The situation had become dire, the reward for the Hood's capture was growing, and Sierra was becoming more suspicious of Parker's nightlife. And so Robbins concocted a plan, and that night the Hood paid a visit to Dennis Golombuski directly. He made a simple offer. He would return the diamonds in exchange for a percentage of their value. Golombuski agreed, but he was secretly far more interested in killing the Hood than getting the stones back. However, Robbins anticipated betrayal and called in an anonymous tip to the FBI letting them know where the Hood would be that night. As Parker expected, during the exchange, Madame Rapier attacked him. But Robbins defeated her and forced her at gunpoint to don a red cloak of her own. When the feds arrived, they wasted no time and opened fire on who they believed to be the Hood, killing her. The other villains watched, but before they interfered, Parker gave them the diamonds, hoping it would be enough for them to leave him alone. The police subsequently identified Rapier's body as Isabel Shaolet, and by nudging John into testifying that the hood he'd seen shoot Officer Bondi was a woman, the FBI were able to pin the hood's crimes on her. All charges against John were dropped, and the hood was believed to be dead. However, Parker's conscience was far from clear, and not long after that, Officer Bondi died as a result of his injuries. Parker promised his mother he would try to be a better person and use his power to help people. He continued to wear the demonic cloak and subsequently was among a group of superhumans kidnapped by a powerful alien entity and instructed to fight each other. Their abductor claimed to be the extremely powerful extra-dimensional being, the Beyonder, but was in fact the Stranger, a substantially less powerful but still formidable entity. During this time, Parker confided in another abductee, Greg Willis, a.k.a. Gravity. Parker told Gravity about Sarah and his soon-to-be-born baby. He admitted that he was trying to be a better person, but he would do whatever it takes to get back to his family. And at the end of the day, Gravity sacrificed his own life to ensure the rest of the group could make it home safely. Subsequently, Parker and Sarah attended Gravity's funeral, although he continued to keep his life as the Hood a secret. And it was shortly after that that Parker's daughter Brianna was born, and at some point he and Sarah married. Any further attempts at nobility were quickly abandoned, however, as the cloak's demonic influence blackened his heart and fed his greed. Sometimes he would even transform completely, resembling the Nisanti when he did. He also grew more adept at using his powers, no longer needing the Nisanti's boots to fly and being able to turn invisible without holding his breath. After the superhero civil war split the superhero community, leaving half of them branded as outlaws, the Hood attempted to take advantage of the new status quo, building his own criminal empire with an army of supervillains. He first turned heads by providing a large number of masked criminals with $25,000 each in seed money, which he presumably stole thanks to his increased abilities. He further earned their respect by attacking the hero Tigra and threatening to harm her mother if she crossed his gang. And if this seems like a meteoric rise for a petty thief who was once unable to pawn a bag of untraceable diamonds, indeed it was. However, it wasn't done by Robbins alone. While wearing the cloak, he heard a voice which guided him in the building of his criminal empire. Soon after building it, his hideout was attacked by a team of Avengers. During the ensuing battle, Parker ensured that John King, who was still by his side, fled the scene. Most of the criminals were apprehended, but the Hood escaped and soon freed them from custody, further earning their loyalty. The Hood then learned the location of the new Avengers headquarters from Tigra and led his supervillain army to attack it. However, Tigra herself joined the battle and struck back against her attacker. Furthermore, Doctor Strange was able to channel the energy of an interdimensional being, Zom, and defeat the villains. 
However, Robbins slipped away again and confided in the demonic voice that only he could hear. He again freed his subordinates from prison and rebuilt his supervillain army. But it wasn't long after this that the alien race known as the Skrulls launched a full-scale invasion of Earth. With the planet on the line, the Hood and his villains joined in the fight against the Skrulls. However, it was this experience that finally pushed Parker to the edge, unable to deal with the impossible madness constantly occurring around him. He demanded that the demonic voice reveal itself. And so, it did. The evil presence responsible for the Nisanti and the Hooded Cloak. The Eater of Souls, the Lord of Chaos, the Ruler of the Dark Dimension, and the Arch Nemesis of Doctor Strange, the Dread Dormammu. You see, some time prior, Doctor Strange had banished Dormammu from the Earth, preventing him from existing in their plane of existence without a human host. The so-called demon that Parker killed died so easily because it wasn't truly alive. It was an empty vessel enchanted by a cult who wished to make use of Dormammu's power. They attempted to accomplish this by placing the mystical bonding cloak on a dead subhuman creature and using it as a vessel for the Dread One. However, Dormammu was not one to be manipulated. He used the vessel to slaughter the cultists and sought a more suitable host. And a suitable host he found in Parker Robbins. The more Parker wore the bonding cloak, the more Dormammu was able to assert control and channel his essence. Meanwhile, because of his role in the final battle of the Skrull invasion, Norman Osborn was considered a hero and put in charge of national security. Behind the scenes, Osborn gathered together a dark cabal of conspirators to help run the world, one of which was the Hood. Osborn trusted Robbins with his more criminal endeavors, such as murdering Frank Castle, the brutal vigilante known as the Punisher. To this end, the Hood used Dormammu's magic to bolster his forces by resurrecting 18 dead supervillains who were killed years prior by the Scourge of the Underworld. When it became clear that brute force wouldn't stop the Punisher, Robbins instead offered to revive his dead wife and children using the same magic. However, Frank didn't believe such a thing could be real and forced the villain Firebrand to torch the scene as his family arose. But with his demonic strength, the Hood was then able to overpower the Punisher and nearly killed him. However, Frank revealed that he knew about Sarah and Brianna, and that if he died, information about Parker's family would be sent to his rival crime lord, Wilson Fisk. This put them at a stalemate, and the Hood released the Punisher. Parker continued his attempts to keep his family and criminal lives separate, but Sarah grew more and more suspicious. Eventually, she followed him and confronted him as he was being picked up, demanding answers. The only truth he offered is that if she ever asked him about his work again, he would leave her forever. That night, he and his trusted driver Sam sat by the river to enjoy a drink together. And when Sam turned his back, Parker shot him in the head, ensuring nobody in his organization knew of his family. And yet he continued his infidelity, this time with the notorious villain, Madame Mask. Underneath the hood, he was still Parker Robbins. At least that's what he told himself. And he would be reminded of his past when he was attacked by a woman calling herself White Fang. She was, in fact, Elizabeth Bondi, the widow of Eric Bondi, the police officer that Robbins had killed early in his career. White Fang nearly defeated the Hood, but Robbins was able to survive by channeling Dormammu's power. Dormammu wanted to kill the woman, but Parker was able to reassert control of himself and escape. He confided in John, telling him what had happened. In turn, John told Parker that he'd noticed how he'd been relying on his demonic power more and more. Seeking answers, Parker consulted Satana, the devil's daughter, who told him more about Dormammu and how he operated. Specifically, that the only way to stop the Dread One from continuing to overtake him was to stop wearing the bonding cloak. And so he started using a replica, only wearing the real cloak when absolutely necessary. He also started spending more time at home with his family in an effort to reconnect with his humanity. He used his ill-gotten wealth to purchase a new home for them in Forest Hills. He also took his wife and child to meet his mother, who had shown signs of improvement at a more expensive facility. 
He soon got the call that she was becoming more cognizant and her memory was returning. It seemed like a miracle. However, Eliza Robbins' sudden recovery was actually caused by Dormammu, who at this point was able to communicate with Parker even while he wasn't wearing the cloak. And when he visited her later, her progress also proved to be temporary. Complicating matters further, despite his efforts to keep them safe, one of his associates, a villain called the Controller, had learned of Parker's family. Seeing his own opportunity for power and influence, the Controller revealed this information to White Fang. In their next encounter, the Hood was horrified to find that the vengeful woman knew about his wife and child. In a panic, he escaped that battle to ensure they were unharmed. While everything seemed fine, not long after this, for a moment, Dormammu possessed Brianna. In a panic, Parker demanded he free her, terrifying Sarah who told him to leave. Parker blamed John for his secret getting out, since he was the only one who knew about his family. Meanwhile, White Fang joined forces with a masked operative named Force, who was also after the Hood. Force sent the Hood a message, challenging him to a one-on-one -on -one fight in front of all of his men, seeking to defeat and discredit him. Since White Fang knew his secret, Parker had no choice but to accept. He wanted to wait until the last possible moment to wear his cloak. However, the Controller had stolen it and destroyed it in front of everyone. But it seems that this was in vain. It was too late, as Parker had already bonded with Dormammu, and the cloak was no longer necessary for him to channel his power. As a result, the Hood defeated the Controller, Force, and White Fang. Furthermore, White Fang promised to swear off her vendetta against the Hood if he spared Force's life. In the aftermath of that, John King was forced to retire to Florida, as Parker could no longer trust him. And although his family was safe, Parker had finally pushed them away from him. The only one he had left was Dormammu, and the Dread One clearly had his own ambitions. Doctor Strange's earlier use of demonic powers had caused him to lose his mastery of the mystic arts, and a new Sorcerer Supreme would need to be chosen. Dormammu commanded the Hood to murder Strange, and steal his position for himself. This led to another battle with the New Avengers, during which Dormammu completely possessed the Hood and took control of his body. However, Robbins wasn't the only one vying for the title of Sorcerer Supreme and the Son of Satan, and Brother Voodoo arrived to help combat him. While Hellstrom held him in place, Brother Voodoo banished Dormammu from the Earth once again. This severed his connection with the Hood, leaving Parker Robbins powerless. However, this wasn't the end of the Hood, and while he recovered in the hospital, he was visited by a fellow member of Osborne's Cabal, the trickster god Loki. Loki granted Robbins a new power source, the Asgardian Nornstones. Parker's strength was restored, and he gained the ability to shoot highly destructive magic bullets from his gun. He continued working with Norman Osborn and joined the fight during his Siege of Asgard. However, during that battle, one of Osborn's Dark Avengers, the hero known as the Sentry, succumbed to his evil persona and transformed into the monster known as the Void. In an attempt to redeem himself, Loki took the Nornstones back from the Hood and used them against the Void. While that battle raged on, Parker and Madame Mask ran and escaped. They went to hide with Mask's father, Count Nefaria, but it wasn't long before they were found and defeated by the new Avengers. Despite being depowered, Parker Robbins was imprisoned in a superhuman holding facility. There he came face to face with Tigra, the woman he'd brutalized and humiliated during his rise to power. However, Tigra wasn't just a superhero. She was also a cop, and she knew that she could do whatever she wanted to him in that cell and get away with it. But she decided not to, because she knew that nothing she did would measure up to what was about to happen. Because that was the day that Sarah finally learned the full truth about Parker Robbins. Tigra went home to hold her own baby, knowing that the Hood wouldn't be able to do the same. That's basically our story for the week, but it wasn't the end for Parker Robbins. 
He eventually escaped and would continue to search for new sources of power, at one point even collecting several of the Infinity Gems before being stopped by the Avengers. Despite these defeats, he has continued his life of crime, always attempting to reclaim his power and respect. However, the one thing that seems to have been lost to him forever is his life with Sarah and Brianna. No matter what he accomplishes, they will never trust him again. And that is the story of Parker Robbins, The Hood. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!